The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph, and Judas and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? They took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and among his own kin and in his own house. And Jesus could no, do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And Jesus was amazed at their unbelief then he went about among the villages teaching. The Gospel of the Lord. The theme of my homily this morning is Touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Psalm 105, verse 15. My dear brothers and sisters, prophets are those who utter divinely inspired revelations. They were called by God, for specific mission and assignment to correct the ills in the community and to teach people the truth and to help them to grow in holiness and repentance. And so in the Jewish era, as God was instituting what we all need to practice, especially as he was forming a people through the first tribe he called, the tribe of Israel, and said, through Israel, all nations shall believe in God. And so he had to guide them. He had to form them. He had to give them that laws that would make them to live well. And so he sent Moses and said, you will be my prophet. You will be the priest you will be the king in Exodus chapter 3. And Moses continued to do this job, and it was not easy for him. You know what he went through? Insult, persecution, hardship, because people don't like to hear the truth. And prophets are always called to speak the very words of God, which in Latin it is known as incisima verba Christi the very words of Christ. If God sent someone to tell you about what you are doing that is wrong, God will not allow you to embellish the words. He will make you to say it as he has told you. And so we continue to have prophets as how he appointed Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 19, and Elijah had his own group of followers whom he was guiding as school of prophets. And then from Elijah, you have Elisha or Elisha, and from there you keep having prophets. And in our own time, we continue to have prophets. But the way it is has changed a little because Christ came as the overall prophet that all those who believe in him will become prophets, kings, and priests. And that is why in baptism, these are the three authorities we all possess. And so you and I are prophets. And that is why in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, the word of God tells us that you are a chosen race. You are a royal priesthood, 
You are a holy nation, a consecrated people called by God to proclaim his praises who has called you out of darkness in his own wonderful light. And so my dear friends in Christ, in the first reading, God called the prophet Ezekiel because Ezekiel was just an ordinary person. And if you look at the history of the call of prophets, God called ordinary people, people who were just going about doing their jobs just to earn a living and who give them that assignment. And he said, go, because this is a stubborn and rebellious people. Go and tell them to stop sin. But did he find it easy? He did not find it easy. Did he disobey? We can't disobey the word of God because it's something that goes with power. If we are stubborn about it, God will punish us. And so the gospel reading presents Jesus, who is the overall prophet. Did Jesus find it easy? No. Even his own people ridiculed him. No training as a teacher of the law. Yet, he was preaching. No training as a carpenter. Yet, he was the son of a carpenter. And they said, are they not his brothers and sisters with us? And his parents, we know him, we know them. What authority? So my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus concluded by saying, a prophet is only respected out of his own territory. But among his own people, there is no respect. And that is true. You know, when I went home in April, as I was preaching to my people, do you know the persons they were looking at? My parents. <laughs> they were looking because they were all in church. They said, who? Oh, this, this, this man, oh, can you imagine? See, with authority, he's preaching like, did, we, we saw him now. He used to move about here you know, as a little boy. Eh? Just ordinary. How can he be telling us these things like this? I know that, is, that may have been what is going on on their minds. And my dear friends, once we start distracting from the word of God and start thinking of what the devil is putting on our mind, we can never have faith. Whatever we hear, we can never believe. And that was why Jesus did not perform any miracle. But you see, I'm here now with you guys because you don't know my parents, you don't even know my country, so you are paying attention. <laughs> yes, and look, it's a fact. That's the truth. It has nothing to do with you like this priest more than this priest. No, Jesus has said it. Your Canadian priest, if they stand in your presence and preach to you, some of you who knows their families here in Windsor, you'll be looking. Ah, oh, is it not? Uh, I, I, I know his family. Uh, is it not? Okay, so that is it. But what Jesus is telling us is that we should stop that. It's a bad habit. Amen? It's a bad habit. Let us know that God called these men and women to do his job, irrespective of their background, irrespective of their families, irrespective of what they profess. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, we are in a rebellious and stubborn generation. And so, so many things are happening. Children will tell their parents how they want to be raised. Teachers will tell parents how they should raise up their kids. Young men and women don't care about holiness, don't care about morals. We are in a generation where whatever you like is correct. And how can we preach to that generation? And they will like us. If I preach against homosexuality, some people will not like me. They will say, oh, where is he coming from? Do you want to teach me what I should do? It's against my human right. You preach about abortion. People will not like you. But are these things correct? Is this what the scripture wants us to, 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 to go? Is it the way? 
So to be a prophet is not easy. So you people should pray for the priests, pray for the bishop, pray for the pope. Because people want us to preach and to say what they like. And when we are preaching the word of God, it's not our words. God gave us this assignment to go and say it as it is. We cannot embellish it. And so that is why I want you people not to be unkind to the priest, to the bishop, to the pope. Say good words about us. Because this task is very difficult. Because we are in a rebellious and stubborn generation. It has been like that from the beginning. It's not today. But do we, do we need to be afraid and keep quiet? No. God will continue to raise his prophets, his preachers. And you guys should also know that you are also a prophet. You are also a preacher because in baptism... That is the assignment God has given to you. So we are all enjoined to preach the truth, first of all, to our children. When I was in Alberta as a pastor, a parent came to me and said, Father, I teach my children that homosexuality is not a sin. So you see that we need to begin from our homes. So these are things that we just need to guide. We know that there are different reasons why people get into that same sex. There are different reasons. We are not condemning it because it is just immoral, but we are just trying to help that things should go the right way. You can decide to do whatever you want to do, but don't force children. Don't force children. Don't force parents. Don't force families. To accept your teaching. Don't even bring them in schools. Don't bring those type of teaching in schools. Because if you say everybody has right, I also have right to raise my kids the way I want. So if you impose it in school, then you are taking away my right and you want me to give you your own right. Does it? Is it fair? So that is why, my dear friends, we are prophets and we should know that People will insult us if we tell them the truth. People will ridicule us. They will even want to kill us because we have spoken the truth. Please let us speak the truth in love. Don't also force your own truth on another person. But just tell the person, this is what the scripture wants us to practice. This is how nature wants it to be. If the person likes it, let the person accept the person doesn't like it, let the person accept. But we continue to do what? To pray for them. St. Paul tells us in the second reading, even though I go through hardship, even though I go through insult, and I told the Lord, Lord, I want to quit. The Lord says, my grace is sufficient for you. And power is made perfect and manifest in weakness. So because you are called by God, you are not having all the powers. You and I are weak. We can also make mistakes. So if we try to speak the truth, we should also speak the truth to ourselves. We should try to also do the right thing. And if we make mistakes, we go for confession. We also try to live a good life. So my dear friends in Christ, let us not keep quiet. Please, let us keep preaching. Let us keep talking. Bad things are happening in the society because the good people that are the majority are keeping quiet. If I tell you what I go through as a priest, I will just, like St. Paul, say, Lord, I'm giving up. Because sometimes people will come to tell me what they want to hear and how I should say it. Sometimes people come to tell me how to celebrate the Mass, how to celebrate the sacrament. But it's good, because they are helping me to also know what, how to be humble. 
Otherwise, I'll become a proud priest and I'll smile and I'll catechize them. So we pray that the good Lord will help us to be true prophets in this hour rebellious and stubborn generation. Please pray for the priest. Pray for the bishop. Pray for the pope. Don't insult them. Don't ridicule them. Because the pope, the bishop, the priest, they are going through a lot. So pray for them. And the good Lord will strengthen you. Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Peace be with you.